Heidi Hatcher. I'm the Glen Allen Area Wildlife Biologist here at the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. I'm Joelle Hepler. I'm the Assistant Area Wildlife Biologist here. And... And I'm Tim. I'm just here for a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Tim helps us here at Fish and Game, too. <laughs> so, we want to thank you guys for coming and uh, hanging out with us today. We are going to talk about outdoor survival, specifically in the winter. It's about 15 below out here today, so it's a good day to talk about how to survive and stay warm and be happy outside. <laughs> so, the first thing we're going to talk about are layers. That's one of the, the most important things when you're getting ready to go outside to have some fun, um, whether you're going to go out and play or go trapping or go hunting or even ice fishing, um, whatever you're going to do. Um, the basics are to start out with good layers. So you want to have a nice base layer. Um, we have a saying that cotton kills in the outdoors. So you want to try to steer away from cotton. And the reason is because if it gets wet, then it's going to kind of wick away your heat and it's going to take a really long time to dry. And you're going to stay cold and wet for a long time. So if you have synthetic layers, those dry really quickly. Um, wool layers are even better. Um, if they do get wet, then they'll still keep you warm. Um, so natural, well, synthetic or wool are great layers to go with um, for your base layer. And then, of course, you want to add some puffy layers on top of that. But one of the really important things about being outside in the winter is to kind of control how warm you get. If you start getting too warm, take the layer off because you don't want to sweat and get wet because um, that'll make you cold again. <laughs> so um, control how many layers you have. Maybe if you're being active and you're going skiing, um, you're going to start out with less layer on, layers on. And then if you stop for a while to have a drink or a snack, then you're going to put on a puffy layer. Um, but it's a really good rule of thumb to never let yourself get more wet than your own body heat can dry out. Um, so you don't want to get all sweaty. You don't want to get roll around in the snow and get all wet or, or fall through the ice. Because, um, yeah, if you can have your own body heat dry yourself out, then you'll be able to stay warm. Um, some other really important things to think about, having proper footwear. Um, that might mean, you know, it depends on how big your boots are, you might want to have two sets of socks on, you might not. I like to have one nice thick wool layer sock. Um, and I've got some, we're actually all three of us wearing mucklucks today. <laughs> and uh, those are, they're nice and roomy and they keep our feet really warm. Um, so those are the kind of boots you're, you're going to be looking for. Just something, you know, you might have pack boots, that's fine. Something nice and, and warm uh, to keep your feet warm and dry. Um, also, really important, of course, are to have your hat, have your buff. Um, you can pull that up over your face if it's really cold. Mittens and gloves are really important. Now, mittens are always going to be warmer than gloves. Personally, I like to have nice, big, roomy mittens because I wear glove liners underneath. So if I take my gloves off because I'm going to do something, then I'm not touching, um, you know, the cold wood or metal with my bare hands. I still have glove liners on. And speaking of glove liners and using your body heat to dry yourself off, um, inevitably if I'm outdoors all day or if I'm camping outside in the winter, these are going to get moist throughout the day. They're going to get kind of wet. And so I always have an extra pair of glove liners. And what I'll do with my wet ones is if you actually stick them in your layers, like stick them on your shoulders, somewhere that you're not going to lose them, and zip up your layer and leave them there, those are going to dry out from your body heat. And so you can stick your other pair of gloves on. And you got nice dry gloves on. And by the end of the day, your other, or by the time these get wet, your other pair of glove liners are going to be dry. So that's something to keep in mind, using your body heat to dry your clothes out whenever you get a chance. Um, yeah. You guys have anything to add about layers? Cotton kills. Remember that one. That's really important. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sin synthetic layering, you know, down coats are great and everything, but when they get wet, they're useless. So it's good, good to practice to always have a synthetic layer. You can always take a puffy with you. And and pack down on that note, um, if you are worried about getting wet, you know, if you've got a down puffy, something like that, having a waterproof shell on the outside will help protect um, your puffy so that it stays nice and dry and warm. Um, so animals, when they're outside, they don't have all these layers that we get to take on and take off. They've got their own way of staying warm. Um, so we've got some furs here to show you. Um, different animals kind of have different ways of 
staying warm, but a lot of the animals up here in Alaska actually have, they do have layers. They have different fur layers. So they'll have a, a thick guard hair layer on the outside, and then underneath they've got a nice woolly layer of fur. So they'll have multiple layers of fur, and that helps keep them warm in the winter. And that's why you'll see, you know, let's say in the springtime you might see moose on the side of the road that look really scraggly. <laughs> And those are actually losing that under hair. They're losing that, that extra layer of fur from the winter because they don't need that for the summer anymore. Um, so that's one way that animals stay outside. And we kind of model our clothing layers after that. All right, after you get all your layers ready and you're dressed up, you know what you're gonna wear to go outside. The next thing you don't want to think about is what you're going to take with you, um, what you're going to be out there doing, and what you want to have in case something goes wrong, or in case you just want to stay warm. So, we've got our day pack here. We're going to talk about some of the things you want to think about taking out with you on a day trip. It doesn't matter whether you're going skiing, or trapping, or what it might be. Um, there are some key items that you want to make sure that you have. Now, one is extra layers. Um, so I've got an extra set of gloves in here in case, you know, my mittens get super soaked or something. I always have an extra set of nice warm gloves that I can put on. Um, these will actually even fit over top of my glove liners, which is even better, because um, then I still have that double layer of protection. I also have extra layers for my body. So if I do get too sweaty, uh, maybe I'll want to take my base layer off and put another layer on. Or if I stop, you know, for a while, uh, maybe I'll have another puffy jacket in here that I can put on real quick to, to keep trap that warmth and, and uh, keep myself from cooling off too quickly. You might want to take something like a satellite communication device in case something happens and you need to get a message out to somebody or call for help or that sort of thing. Um, you can use something like an inReach device. Um, you just have to remember, especially in the winter, electronics fail. So this isn't something that you want to rely on. It's great to have if it works, um, but you know batteries freeze up in the winter, that sort of thing. Um, so you don't want this to be your only way of uh, surviving in the winter, because it might not work. <laughs> now, I also am definitely going to take my water bottle, because I need to stay hydrated. It's really important to stay hydrated. Uh, we'll talk about that also when we talk about food here in a second. Um, but the, if you stay well hydrated, you're more likely to stay warm. Um, if you get dehydrated, your body is not able to keep yourself warm as effectively. Now, the issue here is I have this water bottle and it's 15 below, so eventually throughout the day, this is likely to freeze. So if you have an insulated water bottle, that's really helpful. Um, this one's not insulated, so what I'll do is I'll take my extra layers and I'll wrap my water bottle up in my extra layers to help keep it from freezing. Um, the other thing is, water bottles, water, in water bottles freezes from the top down. So if I were just to throw this in my pack, this water up here at the top would freeze and it would freeze the lid shut and I wouldn't be able to open my water. So even if this was thawed out down here, I wouldn't be able to drink it. Um, so one trick is in the winter time, wrap your water bottle up in your layer and then put it in your backpack upside down. Because then if it does start to freeze, it's gonna freeze up here. You can turn it over and you can still open it up and drink it. So. Put your water bottle upside down in your backpack. And then, another thing that I'm always gonna have with me, if I'm not planning to camp out, I'm gonna have a survival kit with me. And some really important items that are gonna be in that survival kit. I'm gonna have a metal mug or cup or bowl, um, because if it's metal, then if I need to get a fire going, I can use this to melt water, or to melt snow to make water, in case I run out of water. I can also use this uh, to cook in if I need to, um, to make hot drinks. So a metal cup, cup is gonna be key. And then I keep my other survival items in a little plastic baggie, something that's waterproof. In case something does happen, this stuff stays dry. So some things to think about, and these are all things that you can probably find laying around the house um, for the most part. And if you do have to buy something, they're mostly pretty inexpensive. Um, but some things to think about in your survival kit. A whistle. Um, if you do end up getting lost or need somebody to come find you, 
Um, if you're shouting for help, you're going to get tired pretty quickly and your voice isn't going to carry that far. So having a whistle um, will help people find you a lot easier. You might consider having some twine um, in case you need to make a shelter. We're going to go over shelters here in a little bit. Also, uh, having a little spool of, of uh, wire is really great. If you do end up stuck out there for longer than a day or so, um, you can use wire to make snares um, to catch maybe some hares or some, some grouse or something like that to eat. Um, so that's something to consider. Along with the whistle, it's nice to have a signal mirror. Let's say, because it does get dark pretty early and stay dark pretty late in the morning. So if people are out looking for you, let's say they're sitting out a plane or something and they have a spotlight, it's going to be really hard for them to find you. But if you have a signal mirror, then you can kind of shine their light back at them and that can help them find you. <laughs> Having an inexpensive little emergency blanket or even an inexpensive little poncho or both um, can be really helpful. Emergency blankets, if you wrap them around you, can trap a lot of heat. It's pretty surprising what this little piece of, of kind of silvery plastic can do. Um, and you can use a poncho to separate yourself if you have to make yourself a shelter, which we'll also talk about in a little bit. You can use this to, to lay on the snow to keep yourself dry, um, that sort of thing. So these can be really helpful and they're lightweight. They don't cost much. They don't take up a lot of space. I always keep a lighter in my pocket. But lighters fail too, so I also put some waterproof matches in my survival kit. And we talked about the GPS unit or the communication device failing. If you know how to use a map and compass, then having a map for where you are and a compass with you is really helpful. And some kind of fire starter. Now, you can buy fire starters. Um, and you can put those in your in your survival kit, or you can grab some dryer lint um, and an empty toilet paper roll and make your own fire starters. You can also use cotton balls, and you can dip them in petroleum jelly and, turn, and make those as fire starters, and just keep them in a little baggie. Um, those are you know really exp inexpensive but effective fire starters. And when we make a fire here, I'm also going to talk about some fire starters that we have out here in the woods that um, you can usually find if you're in a wooded area and you need to make a fire. Now, the other big thing that's really important if you're going outside to play for the day is how are you going to get around? You know, right now we don't have a ton of snow, but later on in the winter we're going to have a lot more. Um, so whether you're going out with skis or with snowshoes, it's really important to have some way to stay up on top of the snow so that you're not using all your energy just trudging through the snow all day, getting hot and sweaty, getting tired. Um, these are a really important piece of equipment to get around in the outdoors in the winter. And um, it goes back, this is something also that we kind of learn from nature and from animals. Tim here, you want to show them, what do you have here? We have a lynx. So it's a member of the feline family, it's a cat. Um, our only native cat in Alaska. So one of their biggest prey items is the snowshoe hare. Uh, the snowshoe hares have large back feet that are able to run on top of the snow. And the lynx has an adaptation that also has large feet that allow it to effectively hunt hares on top of the snow without falling through. So it's the same idea as the snowshoes that you'll be wearing. So their feet are so big and they're also just so fuzzy. Um, you almost can't even see their, their, the pads on the bottom of their feet because there's so much fur surrounding them and that helps them stay up on top of the snow just like these snowshoes. It's pretty amazing. So, um, The other thing that you want to think about besides just your items that you want to take are what you're going to eat. you got to make sure that you're going to fuel yourself um, to be able to stay warm and have energy outside. You're going to have to eat a lot more than you normally do <laughs> in the winter to stay warm. Um, so it's some things to think about. You want to talk about what you want to maybe start your breakfast? Yeah, oh. so it's really important to start your day off with some calories in your body. So don't skip breakfast, most important meal of the day. 
Um, something really good to eat for breakfast if you're going to be out in the cold burning a lot of calories is some oatmeal uh, or something carby like that because what that oatmeal is going to do is it's going to burn really slowly in your, in your body and keep you warm throughout the day. Um, but then when you're out and you're hiking around and stuff and maybe you stopped to take a little break and you're starting to get chilled, uh, you want something that you can eat that's going to make heat really fast inside of you and that would be something like a candy bar, something that's easy to digest, has a lot of sugar or fat in it, even like butter. Um, you could heat up a hot cup of water um, and make a little oatmeal on the go with some butter in it, you know. Um, so just anything that burns quickly and can keep you warm when you're already outside. That's really important. If you start to feel hungry, um, then you're already too late. You should definitely eat something, otherwise you're not going to be able to keep yourself warm. Yeah, that, yep, definitely. got to keep your body fueled to keep it burning calories to keep it warm. Um, so, and also some other really good snacks to take are things like uh, dried salmon, you know, dried fish, and um, uh, jerky, moose jerky. Um, proteins are really great to snack on throughout the day as well. Um, I take ramen noodles. They're cheap. <laughs> They're full of calories, they're, they're, and they're a hot meal you can make really quickly. So if you make a little small fire, it'll warm you up really fast and you're getting the calories that you need. Your body can also absorb warm water better than it can cold water. Um, so anytime you can heat up a hot beverage or even carry a thermos with some hot tea or something, that's going to be able to warm, your, warm yourself up and get you hydrated. And that's a really good point. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, we're surrounded by all this water because there's snow everywhere. But actually, if you're eating snow to try to hydrate, that snow is taking more energy away from you to melt um, than it's actually helping. So it's better to drink actual water than eat snow, and even better is warm water. Um, so yeah, to keep that in mind. Throughout the winter time, you might see the little brown pellets on the ground. Uh, those are moose droppings. And so in winter, moose are typically eating on the ends of twigs and branches. And so they form these little hard pellets, which also could be great for fire starter. So uh, don't, don't take uh, those for granted if you come across them. They can be very useful. And then caribou, when they're out in the cold in the winter, they're digging through the snow and they're finding lichens to eat. And so that's how they are sustaining themselves and staying warm outside. And so they have two different strategies. The moose have a strategy where they don't move a whole lot and they just eat kind of whatever's around, which is all this woody stuff. Um, and so it's not very great, great quality food, but they're also not using as much energy to find it. Whereas the caribou do move a lot. They're moving around, they're digging in the snow, they're trying to find the lichens because they're really high in protein. So it's a much higher quality food and they're having to work harder to get it. And then of course, you know, besides our ungulates, we also have our carnivores that are out there hunting. So like our lynx hunting the snowshoe hare, he's eating protein to keep himself warm through the winter. Winter time is predator time. And if you guys are driving on these roads, you see a lot of times lynx cross the road or fox, uh, they're on the move. They burn a lot of energy, but this is the time that they like to hunt. Um, keep that in mind when you, if you guys are out and you're taking your dogs too, that there are predators out there. So you want to keep your, your dog you know, close at hand and you don't want to lose your dog out there either. There's also trappers are out, so there's plenty of traps out there on the trails, so beware of where you're at in your environment, your surroundings. All right, one really important skill for outdoor survival, especially in the winter, is knowing how to build a fire. And so we talked about having some fire starters in our um, survival kit. That is very helpful. Um, sometimes, like I said, you can find some natural materials for fire starters. But before you get your fire starter together, you also want to get your other material, materials together for your fire so that you're all ready to go. Um, so you're going to need some to collect some, some sticks and twigs and that sort of thing. And you're going to want to start with really small stuff. You can make yourself a little pile. You want to get everything ready to go before you try to light your fire. Um, so you can have a smaller pile of twigs and then a pile of twigs that are a little bit bigger and then some bigger stuff for once your fire is really going. Um, out here in the snow. We don't have a lot of snow right now. I just found a piece of wood that I can use kind of as the base to set up my fire. Um, if, you, if there's a lot of snow, you can use some spruce branches um, down on the snow or you can try to pack the snow down or dig the snow out if you have a shovel. Another great item you might want to consider bringing. 
um, if there's a lot of snow. So um, some different things you can do to keep your fire from, from uh, sinking all the way down in the snow as it melts the snow. Um, now, we're in an area, when you're in a spruce forest like this, usually it's pretty easy to find some natural fire starters. Um, if you look in the spruce tree, I don't know if you can see very well, but um, there's a lot of green lichens hanging out of, the, out of the branches, and that's called old man's beard. We're going to grab some, I'm just going to bring some over right now. This lichen is called old man's beard. If it's black, it's called witch's hair, and um, those are actually really great fire starters. Now another thing I'm going to come grab off of this tree, most spruce trees, if you look close enough, you can find some pitch. Uh, this one I noticed earlier has a lot of really great pitch on it, so I'm just going to peel some off and bring it over. So this is spruce pitch, and sometimes it's kind of hard like this, and sometimes it's soft and gooey. Um, you can actually chew on this like chewing gum, but also you can use it if you combine it with the old man's beard, or if you have some birch bark, that sort of thing. Um, this is almost like wax, you know, it burns really well, except that you've got to have something for it to melt into, um, like a wick, and the, the old man's beard kind of acts like a wick. So we're going to collect, I'm going to collect a bunch of old man's beard here real quick. We're going to see if we can get a fire going with this stuff, and if not, we can always use our fire starters. So I'm going to get my fire starter down here on the bottom, all that nice old man's beard down on the bottom, and then I'm going to put my spruce pitch on top of that, because as the old man's beard burns it's going to melt the spruce pitch and that'll sink down into the old man's beard and help it burn better and then I've got all my little twigs here ready to go I'm going to go ahead and pile a few little twigs on top because if, if it gets going well then I want the twigs to go ahead and catch so that my fire doesn't go out too quickly and I'm going to cheat and use a lighter if it'll work If you have a little bit of paper in your pack, um, that always helps to add that. Oh yes, some dry grasses, usually a great way to go. Put that under here. Still got our old man's beer in our spruce pitch. Let's see. And we mentioned uh, moose's poop, the winter pellets that moose make. Um, those are essentially condensed sawdust. And so if you take the little pellets and you break them apart, um, then those also make really great fire starters. Fire requires three components. You need a fuel source, you need a heat source, and you need oxygen. So if you have those three things, you can successfully light a fire. But if your fuel source is wet or um, you're, you're not getting any oxygen, like you have too much stuff compacted together, or your heat source is you're like lighter and it keeps running out of, of fluid, then you're not going to successfully be able to light your fire. Like that. 
So if we kept feeding this, then we'd eventually be able to add this bigger stuff and we'd have a nice fire going here. Um, you, know, you, don't, you don't need a huge fire if you're just going to heat up some water, uh, maybe melt some snow. Um, one thing to remember about melting snow is you actually have to have uh, liquid water, a little bit of liquid water to start with in order to melt snow. If I took my metal cup out and I packed it down with snow and I put it on this fire, the snow would actually just burn. Um, it's got to have a little bit of water down at the bottom um, to melt the rest of the snow for it to, to really work. Now we're not going to get this fire any bigger than this because uh, we're not going to be here all day. But um, you can see that we can we can add bigger stuff here and get a nice nice fire going here. Um, we can melt some snow, heat some ramen, have some lunch, or you know if we're stuck here overnight, um, we might gather a bunch of a bunch of wood and then at, you know throughout the night we can add some more wood to it just to keep it going for some. For some heat it's always nice to have some external heat and not have to rely entirely on your own body to keep yourself warm <laughs> and if you guys do find yourself lost it's a great way to signal to a, a That's plane very uh, true. so if people are out looking for you you're a plane buzzing over get that fire roaring you know get that thing going get yeah. some smoke in the air especially um you know if you know somebody's looking for you you hear a plane um you can try putting some green boughs on top of your fire not so much that you're going to put your fire out but that stuff smokes really well and can help uh, signal people for where you are. So. Yeah. Now if you do get caught out um, and you need to spend the night, there are some ways that you can make uh, some shelters. It's really important to kind of try to shelter yourself from the elements. So Tim has made a shelter for us, an example shelter that you could throw together in the woods. So we're gonna go take a look. Oh, wrong way, I forgot my compass. simple lean-to. Yeah. Lean-tos are really popular uh, traditional type of shelter. They're really simple to put up. Um, you can put them up. This one took a, just a few hours. Uh, they don't have to be super elaborate but what the idea is is what you want to do is protect the elements uh, yourself from the elements. Um, so getting cold and wet and hypothermia is the biggest killer out in the, in the woods. So the basic idea is to take a fork stick or larger larger stick um, they don't have to be super long but if you, you guys if you're an adult you might want a longer one and you're going to place it at a 45 degree angle to two upright trees so we found two trees like this we place our fork support like this. We place another one here and then we need a large support like this that runs between the two forks. Uh, once you get that built, I'll take it apart a little bit so you can see. You're gonna you're gonna line it with bracing just like this. Um, you don't have to be pretty. It's not like you're inviting Beyonce over. You're trying to survive. So what you want to do is lay them all together, just a couple inches between them. Again, we have them at a 45 degree angle. We have our cross brace against the tree, holding up our support beam. And we're protected on three sides. So I covered the top, the side on that side, and the side on this side. There's an opening in the front. And uh, what that's going to allow you to do is if you build a fire here in the center, you can 
sit yourself up in the shelter. You have your fire here. And all that heat is going to reflect back to you. And in addition, we build a firewall on the back side. So that's all of our firewood, but it's building a wall to further reflect the heat back to the shelter. One thing to keep in mind is if you do this, you don't want your fire too close to your shelter. You don't want to burn yourself your shelter down, nor do you want to burn down your firewall. So you want a good space between the two. So we'll talk about elements a little bit. Um, in the winter time, it's going to be snow. So you want to make sure your supports are really strong. And you also can use uh, spruce boughs to line the top of your, of your shelter so that nothing's falling down on you. And actually, when you get more snow on top, it's going to further help insulate your shelter. On the inside, you're going to lose most of your heat from your body to the ground. So anytime that you're laying out uh, on the ground, you're losing all your radiant heat. So what I did is I lined this thing with tons of grass. You can use leaves, you can use spruce boughs, um, and pile them up thick. You can also use your emergency blanket or your um, your uh, poncho, part of poncho um, if you have one. And that brings us uh, another item that we didn't mention before, but that it's really helpful to have on you, um, either in your day pack or just carrying with you, depending on what you're doing. Normally, I've got either a knife or a multi-tool in my pocket for whatever I'm doing anyway. And if I don't, then I'll put one in my survival kit. Um, so that's really helpful to have. And one of the most important things to try to avoid the situation if you don't want to spend the night outside, if you're not intending to, and um, one of the ways to try to avoid a survival situation such as this is make sure somebody knows where you're going and what you're doing. <laughs> and that way, if you if you come, you know, if you haven't come back yet, then they know when and where to start looking for you. So, talking about insulation a little bit and wildlife. Um, so here we have a bird's nest. So what we can see here is that they've lined fine grasses on the inside and that's creating dead space that's allowing the heat to stay inside. Um, and that's how they keep nice and toasty in there, keep their eggs warm. Another animal that uh, builds dens to stay warm in the winter also are bears, brown bears and black bears. Uh, they'll burrow into the ground or into the snow and they can keep the temperature inside of there pretty warm because the snow is so insulating. Um, another little animal that you might not think of is a pika. Pikas also build these pretty intricate little dens, and all summer long, they're picking grasses and, and their food, and they're storing it in, in these little dens and storage areas, and then they have little areas connected to them that they sleep in. Um, and that's how even something really tiny can stay warm up here in Alaska when it's really cold in the winter. That's all we have for you guys today, some basic outdoor survival tips. Um, if you have questions, feel free to give us a call at Fish and Game. Um, we always have some more tips. We can even show you how to make some snares. Um, thanks again for joining us. Uh, it was a lot of fun sharing this with you guys. Um, so thanks again, and we hope to see you around.